Welcome back to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Victoria Samuels. The Suns opened training camp this morning with their annual media day. While it's usually a day of optimism, the upcoming season, the Suns were dealing with the black cloud left by the suspension of owner Robert Sarver. Cronkite News reporter Liam Archer has reaction from the team. It was a somber media day for the Phoenix Suns, who spent most of the morning responding to the suspension of owner Robert Sarver. Suns general manager James Jones expressed disbelief in the findings of the 10-month-long investigation into racist and sexist behavior. The state of shock, personally, you just don't want to see those types of findings. That's, that's, you don't want that to be the narrative around your organization. The investigation inside Robert Sarver's workplace misconduct found that over his tenure as team owner, Robert Sarver engaged in racist and misogynistic dialogue. The report also indicated that Sarver used the N-word at least five times, even after being told to stop by colleagues. When I, I saw the report, I was not happy about it, quite frankly disgusted. Um, it's not a word you repeat. Players echoed the disappointment, saying the investigation's findings came as a shock as they read the entire report. It's not the Robert Sarver that welcomed me to Phoenix with open arms, um, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, insensitive to everybody that's involved in the situation. I read it, uh, I read all of it, the full report, and like I said, I was, uh, um, I was, I was bothered by it, but now we got to move on. Sarver announced on September 21st that he would begin the process of selling the franchise as the team tries to get ready for the upcoming season. In Phoenix, Liam Archer, Cronkite News. The Suns will begin training camp with a full team meeting tonight as they look to shift their focus back to the basketball court. And speaking of on the court business, the Suns also have some roster questions to answer. While all of their big names were on hand today, there was one significant player missing. Cronkite News reporter Michael Donahue tells us who won't be around for much longer. On Sunday, the Suns and Jay Crowder mutually agreed for Crowder not to attend media day as the Suns looked to trade the 11-year veteran. Members of the Suns emphasize that there's no hard feelings towards Crowder and this decision will ultimately be the best for the team. This is an ongoing conversation and after very fruitful and, and, and deliberate uh, conversations, we just decided it was best that he wasn't with us for training camp. Um, what that means going forward, um, I don't know. We don't know. These things happen, you know, and you have to transition and move forward. Um, I totally uh, am behind James and how we are handling this. And again, all the stuff that went on behind the scenes will remain private. What I know is that everybody has to do what's best for them, and I'm always going to support any one of my teammates, especially somebody like Jay, who uh, is a huge reason why we were even successful the past few years. So, Jones says he'll keep conversations on Crowder private at the moment and did not specify who or what the Suns would want in return for him. Crowder took to Twitter on Sunday for his feelings on the situation, saying, quote, one must find work where he is needed. In Phoenix, Michael Donahue, Cronkite News. Once traded, Crowder will be playing for his eighth team in the league. Saturday night, the ASU football team hosted the 13th ranked Utah Utes, and the game marked the debut of Sean Aguano as the Sun Devils interim head coach, replacing Herm Edwards. There may have been a new coach, but the results were still the same. Aguano watched the Sun Devils struggle as Utah had their way dominating ASU 34 to 13, dropping Arizona State to one and three on the season. After the game, Aguano was trying to deliver a positive message as his team pushes forward. My heart, and I told them at halftime, and then I told them at the game, there will be no quit from me, and there will be no quit from our staff. I mean, nothing will be changed in a game or in one week, you know. Um, but I, I do think the changes that Coach Aguano made um, will be, I mean, very good for our team for the rest of the season. I, I feel like we'll definitely improve. It's a long way from their days together on the Arizona Cardinals, but Ken Harvey and John Booty are still playing the game they love, even though it's with a decidedly different kind of athlete, as Haley Smiler reports from our Washington Bureau. 
The 13th annual congressional football game pitted Capitol Police officers, the guards, against members of Congress who call themselves the Mean Machine. Ken Harvey and John Booty say coaching lawmakers has some similarities to any other team and some differences. It's like a real team. You got you got some players that are gung ho and give 100%. You got some you got to teach. You got some you can pat on the back. Some you got to kind of shake a little bit. But you know, you know, it's amazing. They love to talk. I get out on our little power trip, my power trip. I get to make them do uh, push-ups, and so it's like, yeah, hey, I'm in control. Coaching the Mean Machine is just the latest twist in a history for the two former players that goes back to growing up in Texas. I'm from Texas, we went to a junior college. We didn't go to the same junior college. We were in the NFL draft together at the NFL Combine together. Then in 1993, I became a Arizona, Phoenix Cardinal then, uh, then we played one year at the Cardinals. And that was the 1993 season when the Cardinals went 7-9. and nine. Arby says that playing together bonded the two and let them build a brotherly relationship. Those bonds were renewed in 2004 when the two were in Washington and were approached about coaching the Mean Machine, with Booty focusing on the offense and Harvey on the defense. Get those bonds from playing football. We played together with the Cardinals mm -hmm. and so when we, saw, when we saw each other a long time ago, we're like, you know, we're boys, we're, yeah. we're, we're together. The two have coached the congressional team every year since. They admit it's less competitive than they're used to in the pros, and the level of play isn't as high. But win or lose, for everyone involved in the game, it's all about the charities the game raises money for, and using the platform that the lawmakers and former pros have to help out the community. To be able to raise over $400,000 for local DC charities because of a bunch of old guys playing some very healthy cops in a football game, that makes me proud. Proud, but not victorious. The guards beat the Mean Machine 19-8 to at last week's game, the 12th time in the 13 years that the game's been played that the guards have won. But Booty and Harvey said they'll be back next year looking for that coveted second win. In Washington, Haley Smilo, Cronkite News. That's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sydney.